Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a data lab transient recorder DL901. And here is the cool thing. If you look at the front, I think you get the idea real fast what this is all about. I mean, don't you see a complete oscilloscope front end here? One channel oscilloscope. So we've got an input, AC, DC, all this volts per division, or no, this is called volts full scale. DC offset. Trigger can be internal or external, AC and all that. I mean, see, auto, continuous, single, and the level for trick. There's even a delay, sweep time and sweep delayed. And here's, of course, the time base for your sweep. And then when it's done, when it stored your waveform, then you can plot or what is that punch? I don't understand what you're doing here, but I think you deliver the data to something external. I have been Googling around like crazy. I am not able to find data sheets, specification, information, software, anything at all on this unit. So I'm a little bit afraid I cannot get this up and running, but we can still see how it's designed and how it's built, right? So we've got a little bit more here on the back about this unit. It's called the Data Laboratories LTD from England. We've got the type number, serial number, and all that kind of stuff. A nice little heat sink for the power supply. And I think we've got something here for a display. And what is all this about? We've got a spare connector and trick and plot and is this a for a plotter or is this for a an oscilloscope? Uh, I am a little bit um, hmm, confused about what is going on here. And there's of course an IEEE port for the for the curve in the digital format. Yeah, I think we should start uh, opening up and see how is this status inside. It is, as expected, very, very beautifully designed inside. So here's the transformer. We got a little bit of a um, fungus issue on one of those cables. No leakage on the... Capacitors should probably look a little bit more in detail. We got some power supplies here with uh, variable output, and that's a little bit confusing. Why those tiny little chips when the variable voltages go to some of the parts down here or something? I want to see what is going on, so I think I will try and take this board out and have a deeper look. It looks like uh, all the ICs, there are good old TTL ICs. And uh, I've been looking a little bit around on them, on the date codes here. And what is it we see? Uh, I think the, the newest date code is 78. I see a lot of them from 77, 78. I can't find anything that is after 78, so I think this is where we are at. We've got a little crystal oscillator here, 3 megahertz. So that will, of course, be the time base, uh, all digital going around that. The analog input is here. And the an uh, attenuator, we've got some amplifiers and stuff going on in here. And uh, so here's the fun thing. I find a PMI a DAC 100, and this one is a 10-bit digital to analog converter. So what I think they're doing is, I think they're uh, making their own uh, successive approximation analog to digital converter by counting. You see all those counters? Ooh, I don't know, here we go. That will be some counters, right? And the, 
So what I think they do is they count and then they compare with the input uh, voltage until there is a match and then we stop counting and now you know the number. And you can do this because this unit is actually running quite slow. Remember earlier when we talked about the sweep time. So the fastest sweep time is 5 milliseconds. And I mean in the digital world of time basing, that will give you plenty of time to handle a uh, super slow but high resolution AD converter. And uh, I don't know exactly what is going on here after all the counters. We got some latches and some funky stuff here. We got those ICs. That one I don't know yet what that is doing. Um, I don't have any specifications, data sheets or information about that. And those eight metal cans here, again, no clue whatsoever. I'm not able to look them up yet. But I will probably go and uh, Google a lot more on that. We can't see a lot more here on the first little view. So this is the bottom side of the unit. And there's another plug-in board. And the IEEE interface is made really nice without all those wires and problems with connectors and such. No way! They soldered the connector directly to the circuit board like that. Pretty neat. I don't know exactly what this board here is doing, but it looks like it's, it's connected to the IEEE stuff. Funny with the solder mask on only one side. And no solder mask on the other side. That's weird. We got some more trimmers and that's probably around the power supplies yeah more trimmers here see that looks like we need a fast analog front end so this is compensation capacitors for the different voltage dividers yes that is the input we got a lot of little loosey wires here doing all sorts of funky mods and they forgot to uh, to glue them Plenty of little test points uh, sticking up so you can grab with your scope and do all sorts of uh, funny things. How about this cut out in the circuit board? Yeah, what is going on here? I still don't find any like memory. It's just uh Logic gates in one big Amiga Maunum setup here. And um, I think the outputs we got right there, that'll be the coax cables to the analog output there. We also got some really nice twisted pair cables here just for shielding and uh, so that will be the power supply connector. I disconnected from the power supply here. And the, the power supply consists of 3723. Uh, and those are um, really, really a good power supply IC. And you can combine them with external transistors and get a lot more power. So that is definitely how they have done it. And the three voltages, they go down here and they are combined with the three green wires to the zero rail. I think I want to try and power it up and see what is going on at the BNC connectors. I think that will be my next move because I will never be able to communicate with it uh, on the IEEE anyway. So I've now connected uh, just three of the PNC connectors to my scope just to see what's going on. And I just want to share with you the very first power on if there is any smoke or funky stuff going on here. Well, I see um, actually some pulses here and I expect if I, no, I was expecting <laughs> uh, the time base 
Nä. What is going on? Come on, man. So I've been through all the different modes and all the things I can dial around with. So this is the analog output and it I do have a response. I mean, that seems definitely to be the start trick and I got some different pulses that's doing something. I was expecting some analog output um, and some of these should be um, affected by the incoming signal and I have of course uh, I'm inputting a sine wave here is nice and slow and uh, when I dial around with the time base and the analog uh, input attenuator of course the time base see here there's a nice response on all that so that sweep thing is working and I am now in auto mode and that is why it is starting and sampling and doing all its fantastic things but when I'm dialing around with the analog input, nothing responds to that. So now I know that the problem is the analog input system is uh, overdrive, driven, blown up, or something like that happened. I don't know exactly why. And w without any manuals, without any schematics, without anything at all, I don't see I uh, have any a chance to uh, move on with this one. It could have been really funny, you know, to have a an analog storage unit and to, I don't know, put it on some of my recorders or, uh, yeah, build a little digital uh, scope and plot it on some paper and I don't know. <laughs> I can come up with a lot of cool things I could do with this one, but this another little thing that I, I figured out with the, okay, we know we now have a 10-bit resolution and we now know what everything here is doing on the front panel, right? So, so what I can, what I could have done, I mean, <laughs> because five milliseconds and 10 milliseconds, okay? And 10 bit resolution. And it is really just an Arduino, you know, really. And a few lines of code and then I could save 42 watts of power usage and uh, you can even em uh, emulate the 8-bit uh, IEEE port and you can also play back the curves that you have stored on the analog uh, interface. <laughs> there could be so much fun to do that one day. Uh, I really like the, the case and the design and those knobs are nice and shiny and, and all that. And yeah, but I don't have any lock. It's just, see, no response on anything here. Only time base and obviously this arm and single is of course not responding to my incoming, no matter what I do here, right? Nah, sucks. So, I think I'm done playing with this one for tonight, at least uh, for now. So thank you very much for watching so far. I hope you had at least a little bit of fun. It's not all the time I get something really cool out of these uh, units. And uh, it's just one of those days, unfortunately. I still wanted to know what this baby here is uh, doing that is a cool, cool chip. And uh, why are we having four of these, whatever they are? So that is a little extra task I want to play around with. And here is the nice front end. And it looks a little bit like a one channel oscilloscope uh, front end. Why is it so warm here? Something is running. What is going on here? I can feel something is warm. Oh, it's the heatsink mother of all bad things. Ay, 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 ay. Whew. <laughs> 
That is some, some heater here, but it's also using 43 watts at the moment. So that is why.